brain. Your hypothalamus is the link between the nervous system and the hormone system. Depending on what hormones the hypothalamus leaks out, that's going to give you behaviors inside the body. Okay? So now, everybody always sits back and says, how do hormones work, John? How does, how does homeostasis work? Like, I don't even get it. Let me bring it down for you, okay? Because I know you've learned about the hypothalamus and I know you've heard stuff like this. It's, it returns things to a set point, brings things back to balance, all that kind of stuff. That's all true, but most people think of the hypothalamus like a teeter-totter. They look at it and they're like, oh, it's off a little bit, I'll just bring it back a little bit. It's off a little bit over here, I'll bring it back. But that's untrue. That is not true. I need you to really get this. Let this burn in your brain. Homeostasis is only possible in a normal environment. Homeostasis is only possible in a normal environment. Okay? You are not under a normal environment. Your body is always dealing with stressors. Always. So that is not called homeostasis anymore. That's <coughs> called allostasis. Okay? And allostasis isn't a teeter-totter. Allostasis is like if I was up here right now and I had 10 tennis balls in my hands and I juggle 10 tennis balls, there's balance in that. But it's chaotic. It's constantly changing all the time. Would you agree with me? Good. So let's pretend. Let's pretend I give each and every one of you another tennis ball. And I say one at a time, I want you to lob another tennis ball to me and I will add it to the 10 that I'm already juggling. You would agree with me if there's 40 people in this room, at some point in time, I'm going to be juggling, somebody's going to send one more tennis ball to me and I can't quite catch it. Right? I can't quite get it. So let me ask you a question. On that last tennis ball, do I drop only that last one or do I drop everything? Which one? I drop everything. Correct? Why? How come I don't just carry on and allow just that one tennis ball to, to drop? Because I know that if I try to catch that last one, it'll throw off my timing for everything else so all the tennis balls drop down. Yes? That in a nutshell is something called allostatic load. The point at which your body can no longer maintain balance. And as soon as your body can no longer maintain balance, that leads to disease and illness. So that last tennis ball is that kind of like the straw that breaks the camel's back. Your body's trying its best, it's coping, it's balancing, it's healing, and then there's one more stressor that comes in, and then everything starts to fall apart. So far so good? Why is that important? Because that's how your hormone system works too. Your hormone system works the exact same way. You cannot have an effect only on one hormone without having a complete cascade of events happen to a bunch of other hormones as well. You can't just affect one hormone. You have to have a change in other hormones. I'll give you an example. Okay, give me an example. I'm very much into fitness. So I work out at two different gyms. One's really close to my office, one's close to the airport. So I'm at the airport all the time, so I work out at the other. The one close to my office is what I would call my family fitness gym. So people like us work out there. My other gym is what I would call my juicer gym. Okay? Do you guys know what a juicer is? A juicer is people who take anabolic steroids. Okay? So the people at this particular gym are powerlifters, bodybuilders, Olympic athletes, you name it. Those people who are high level of competition are at this particular gym. Okay? I'm the smallest guy in there by about 100 pounds. All right? One of my good friends and clients, his name is Stefan. He's a professional bodybuilder and he's very open with his drug use. Okay? So I was chatting with him one day and I said, dude, I'm, I'm, as your chiropractor and as your friend, I'm concerned. You know, like what about all this toxicity in your liver, your kidneys, all this kind of stuff? And he goes, oh, Dr. John, it's a real science. I said, really? And he says, yeah, you really have to understand the hormone system of the body in order to do this stuff properly. And I said, really? you got to remember, let me describe Stefan to you. Stefan is five feet tall and five feet wide. Okay? <laughs> Stefan is gigantic. So when someone that looks like Hulk Hogan says to you, you have to understand the hormone system of the body, well, I'm all ears at this point in time, right? <laughs> so I said, describe to me what you're talking about. And he says, well, a lot of people think that I just take a lot of testosterone to get big. And he says, that's part of it. He goes, but that's very little part of the equation. And I said, Really? And he says, yes, like, have you ever heard of side effects of steroids? Like, for example, have you ever heard of things like roid rage or 
back acne or sweating stuff. I go, yeah, I've heard of that. He goes, okay, that's a perfect example of people who don't know how to balance the hormone system in their body. Because when they can't balance the hormone system in their body, you get all these crazy reactions start to happen. And I said, give me an example. He goes, okay, this is what I take. He said, right off the top, in order to get the size that I have to get, I have to inject a major amount of testosterone. But when I inject a major amount of testosterone, my own body wants to shut off its own production of testosterone. That's called downregulation. Okay? But he said, but I don't want my body to shut off its own production of testosterone. So what I have to do right after I inject testosterone is I have to inject another chemical called HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. Why is that important? because HCG makes the brain release follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormones so that when it gets to the testicles of the man, it'll continue to release testosterone no matter how much testosterone is in the blood, okay? But, and I said, all right, and he goes, but there's a problem with that. And I said, okay. He said, see, when you have lots of testosterone in your bloodstream, your body wants to convert some of it into estrogen. And he said, so I have to take an anti-estrogen injection in order for that to happen, so to stop it. And I said, okay. And he said, but you have to understand, I'm trying to get really, really big here. He said, so in order for me to get big, I have to eat a tremendous amount of food. So in order for me to in, like, digest and utilize the food to the amount that I need, he said, I have to inject insulin in order for that to happen. And I said, okay. He said, but when I inject insulin, see, it'll, it'll, it'll bring in all this food and all this nutrients and all this sugar. He said, but the problem is, is I want it not to turn into fat. I want it to turn into muscle. He goes, so that's why I have to inject growth hormone in order for that to happen. He said, but as soon as I inject growth hormone, that's going to affect my thyroid hormone. So as soon as I affect thyroid hormone, I have to inject thyroid hormone in order to balance that all out. He went on and on and on for another five or ten minutes about this plethora of hormones he was on to balance everything out. 